going to make four more of those in a second. This is going to say first name, then I'm going to have a text box for the first name, then another label with last name and a text box for the last name, etc. Now, what I like to do, you don't have to do this. All right, is I like to go to my label and I like to take my label and give it a darker color than what it has. So it stands out. So now that label really stands out. And guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to name these buttons. OK, so I'm going to go to this button right here first. And I'm going to name this BTN, little BTN, calculate with a capital C. And for the text on the button, I'm going to have the word calculate. All right, there it is. We'll make this text bigger in just a minute. Then I'm going to go over to the second button and I'm going to make the text on there clear. Not like that. Clear. And I'm going to call that button BTN clear. And the last button will be exit and it'll be called BTN exit. All right, now those buttons are pretty much in place right now. Now, the bad thing about this is notice I can't stretch this. It's not letting me make it bigger. Geez, what, you know, come on, I want to make that bigger. Okay, I can line it up, but I want this to be bigger. The way to do that is you click on it, you go over up on your top in your properties window, and you find where it says auto size. Now, I think auto size should be true, meaning you can size it, but Microsoft has set it up so if auto size is selected, you can't resize it. But notice if I change auto size to false, now I can change the size of this and I can change the width of this, etc. All right. Let's take this one and I'm gonna I'm I'm not I'm not even gonna rename it now, but I want to take this and copy it down four times. OK, why? Because again, these are going to be exactly what I told you they were, and that is. Let's see. Need a little more space probably than I gave myself, but so there's going to be the first name, the last name, the hours worked, the hourly rate. And the gross. Now I can move these up a little bit. There. All right. And I'm going to fix all these. I'll rename them. And I'll do all of it in just a minute. But I want to be able to over here actually input the first name, the last name, the hours worked, the hourly rate, and have it give me the gross right there. So for that, I go down and I find a, a control called text box. So labels are headings. Buttons are typically where you put in code that you want to have react to the program. And text boxes are where you typically input things or show things to be outputted. So there's the text box. Now that I can make wider, but I can't make it higher. We'll do that in a minute. So I'm going to copy that. And again, so here's my second text box, my third text box. Oops, I put in one too many, so let's get rid of one of these. Okay, now it looks kind of ugly right now because things aren't all the same size and whatever, and I could do this individually, but I wanted to show you what's called lassoing. So I'm going to take my mouse and put it in the upper left-hand corner here. I'm going to hold down on the left mouse button and I'm going to highlight all of the stuff that's here. And you can see that it all is highlighted now. Now I'm going to go over to in here in my properties window. I'm going to find font. And right now it's too small. So I want to come in here and reset the font. Oh, let's make it three times what it is. So 24, bold, and I like Arial font, Arial. OK, now it's much easier to read this stuff. All right, again, it sure isn't perfect, but it looks a lot nicer than it did a couple minutes ago. All right, 
couple more things to do first. First, I guess I'd like this to be a little bit bigger, these, so they're almost touching this. So I can highlight all of them at once and drag them over. I like that better. That's just me. And the next thing is, I would like all these all these headings. They're now left justified. I can center justify them. I can write justify them. I want them all to be right justified. All right. So I, with all these highlighted, I'm going to come down to where it says text align. Right now it says top left. If I click on there, I don't know why Microsoft does this, but they show you pictures. I want it here, which means middle right. I like the way that looks better. I'm going to change all these labels in just a minute, but that's just me. Finally, with these text boxes here, I want all the text that's in there to be centered. Now when I go to text, align, if I don't get the picture, I get left, right, or center. So I'm going to choose center. All right. Okay, it's getting there. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to lock my interface into place. In other words, I don't want any of this stuff to be able to be removed or moved around. All right. So I'm going to again lasso this by grabbing all of them. Then I'm going to right mouse click on anything that's in here, and I'm going to choose lock controls, which is almost halfway down. Now my interface is locked into place. I can't move this. I can't move any of this stuff around. If I decide later I want to move something, I can highlight them again and do another lock controls, which unlocks them. All right. So right now, this is done. It's called BTN calculate and it says calculate. It's called BTN clear and it says clear. It's called BTN exit and it says exit. Those are all good as far as their names. I still want to put some code by all of them. We'll do that in a bit. But I want to change these. Labels start with LBL. Text boxes start with TXT. So this will be the first name. So the name of it will be LBL first name. And the text that's in there will be first name name all right then the next one will be lbl last name and the text that's in there will be last name all right then this next one here will be lbl hourly rate no we'll put it hours work first hours worked and the text will be hours worked all right the next one will be hourly rate And finally, the last one will be gross pay. I always recommend to students, always rename your controls before you add any code. All right, otherwise it, it can be weird. We'll, we'll see examples of it later, but not right now. Now, you don't have to do this. But since I call that one LBL first name, I automatically call this one TXT first name, which will mean this one will be called TXT last name. Notice I'm not putting any anything in there. That's where I'm going to end up inputting things. This will be TXT hours worked. This will be TXT hourly rate. And this will be TXT gross pay. All right. Now, there's nothing programmed into this yet, and we're going to make a couple changes here, but let's at least see when we run it. I'm going to click there. Whoop. I have to tell the system that's my new program. So I have to go over to 
payroll GUI 01, right mouse click on it and choose set as startup project. Now I can run it. And there it is. Okay, a couple things I'd like to change. First of all, I'd like it to be in the middle like this. Second, I'd like it set up so when it starts, my cursor is in there. Notice I centered it. And then when I click tab, it goes to there, then to there, then to there. This is going to be read only in a minute. But when I click tab from here, I want it to go there, then there, and then there. So let's fix those. All right. The way you do that is you click on the form. And the first thing I want to do is I want to go down to where it says start position and change that from Windows default location to center screen. Now notice if I run it, it's now in the center of the screen. So that's the first thing I wanted to do. Next, I want to reset my tab order. All right. I want it to go here, then here, then here, then here, then here, here, and here. The other stuff doesn't matter, but I'll set everything. So I go to view and I go down to where it says tab order about two thirds of the way down. And then I click, there's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. I really don't even need to do the rest, but seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. To make those numbers go away, I do another view tab order. Now notice if I run the program, you can see where my cursor is, tab, 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 tab. You cannot tab, you cannot tab to a label. Labels cannot get what's called the focus. All right, so you cannot tab to those. All right. Now, Let's play computer for a second and figure out when I click this calculate button, I want to take whatever's here. I don't have to do anything with it. I don't have to do anything here, but I want to take whatever's here, multiply it by whatever's there and put it here. So if I've got 40, 25, I want that to say a thousand. That should make sense. So that's what I want when I calculate. When I clear, when I clear, I want this to clear. 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 And I want my cursor to go back there. So that's what I want to do when I clear. Finally, when I click exit, I want to ask the user, are you sure you want to exit? And if they say yes, they exit. If they say no, they stay right here. So let's do those next. All right. So first of all, We'll do the calculate last, but I like to actually click on the buttons. So I'm putting the code in in the order in which they're shown there. You don't have to do that. All right, so there's the there's that and then there's that. All right, so let's do the clear first. So remember, this is TXT first name, TXT last name, TXT hours worked, TXT hourly rate and TXT gross pay. And I'm going to show you a couple different ways that we can clear those out. And I'm I, I'm gonna show you first the way that I would do it. And that is, I'm gonna say TXT, first name, and I spell first name wrong, can you believe that? Let's fix that. That was really something on my part. So let's go back, TXT, first name, all right. Let me just check them all quickly last. I think the rest are OK. We'll, we'll find out in a second. All right, so let's fix this. So TXT first name. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, these eyes are getting too old, so hold on. All right, I think I finally got it right. All right. So TXT first name, 
dot text, the easiest way to do it is to say equals double quote, double quote. You can also say txt first name dot text equals, and you can say string dot empty, which to me is too much typing when I don't have to do it. Or the other way you could do it, and some people would rather do it this way, is you can say txt first name dot clear. All those will work. I'm just going to, the whole semester, I'm going to do it like this. It's just the way that I learned to do it. And just so you know, I'm self-taught on all this stuff. All right, so txt last name dot text equals double quote, double quote. txt, what was next? Hours worked dot text equals double quote, double quote. txt hourly rate dot text equals double quote, double quote. And finally, txt gross pay dot text equal double quote, double quote. And as I told you before, if you want to be really whatever it is, quickly about this, you can do that afterwards. All right, so let's see if that all works. So I can come in here and I'll put something into every one of these and click clear, okay? but I didn't put my cursor there like I wanted. So we got to put in one more line. And that is we want to say txt first name dot focus. That means set the focus or put the cursor in there. Let's see if that worked. And that one's all working, all right? Now, one thing I should have done, didn't do previously, but I'm going to do it right now, is this gross pay, this is the answer. So I want to make that field read only. How do I do that? I click on here and I go down and find read only, and I can either click on it, click on the down arrow and choose true, or with it false, I can just double click on the word false and it changes to true. Now I cannot enter a value in here. So when this program runs, notice I cannot click in there. It can get the focus because I can put the cursor there, but I cannot put a value in there. Okay, and clear is still working. So that's done. So the first one is done. All right, for the next one, and I have to remember to do this right after class today, I want to send you a little code snippet that's very short, but so everybody has it. You know, you can use it, not use it, whatever you want to do. But let me come back to here. Oh, I'm not going to be able to get it from there. Hold on. And I don't even want to go into why, but I can't. So let's see. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Again, you will get all this code. It's it's not long. It's only about six or seven lines. But you will get it after class today. All right. Now, what's going to happen is when we click the button, it's going to bring up a message box, a little box that says, do you really want to exit the program? That'll be the text that's in the box. and the title of the box will be exit now. It will also have two buttons on it, a yes button and a no button. If we click the yes button, the program will close. If we click the no button, nothing will happen. And we'll have a little icon there that looks like a question mark. So let's do this. And let me run it. 
let me move this. And let me click exit. Let me move this. Just so you can see everything here. So where it says, do you really want to program? That's this. Where it says exit now. Oops, sorry. That's this. Where it's got the yes, no buttons. There they are. Where it says question, that's our icon. If we click no, nothing happens. But if we click yes, the program exits. So we've got two thirds of what we want to work on out of the way. We've got our clear button working. We've got our exit button working. All right. I'd like to put one more thing in here before we add the stuff for calculate. We'll do that in a second. But that is, I want the program to, to set up and run. So if I hit the enter key, it's as though I click the calculate button. And if I hit the escape key, it's as though I click the clear button. All right, how do I do that? Well, I go back and I click on the form and I go into my properties window and under accept button, that's the one for when you hit enter. I'm going to set that to BTN calculate. And under the cancel button, that's if you hit escape, I'm going to set that to BTN clear. All right. So now all that's left is my calculate. All right. And I'm going to see if I can steal some of my code from the last one that we just did. Now I'm going to have to make changes. So when I copy this in, I'm going to get errors, just so you know. In fact, I'll probably get lots of errors. That's totally fine. All right, so my calculate here, I'm going to paste that in. And like I said, don't worry if I get errors. So we'll leave these. First name, last name, output string, we'll leave all those. We don't have to ask the user to enter anything anymore. All right. The hours and rate, yeah, they'll work in a second. That's okay. There's no clear in here. We don't have an output string. We don't have a read line. So really all we need from what we had before, whoops, is this. All right. And it's even easier than that. What do I mean is this. We don't need to do anything special for the first name or the last name or the output string. We don't have to do anything special with any of these. They're gone. So what do we have to do? Well, just like we kind of did before, but we'll say hours equal decimal dot parse. But now what we want to parse is txt hours worked dot text. All right. And what we want to parse in here for rate, same thing basically, but Now it's txt hourly rate dot text. All right, and after we've done those, gross is going to be equal to hours times rate. That's all good. It's not done yet, but that's good. We have to tell it to take that gross and put it back on the screen. So I'm going to come in here and say txt gross pay dot text equal gross dot to string and I want it to be in a currency format dollars and cents. That's very little code and let's see if it works. All right. Put me in there. I work 40 hours a week. I make $25 an hour. There's my gross pay. If I clear, everything clears, now I can put another person in there. All right, Millie King, she works 55 hours a week and she makes $25 an hour. Now, instead of clicking calculate with my thing right there, I'm going to hit the enter key. There I get that. Instead of clicking clear, all right, with my mouse right there, I'm going to hit escape. And now that works. 
if this is still going to break, if I come in here, I could leave these blank, it doesn't matter. But if I leave these blank and I click calculate, same error I got before, a system format error. It's the same problem that we had before. I am doing something that is illegal. I want to say that again. I'm doing something that's illegal. We will learn to fix all that in later chapters. All right. OK. So we've come in and in one period we've gone over chapter one. And we've written three programs. All right. Now I want to show you a couple things here. They may make very little sense to those of you who have not had any classes before. And those of you who have had classes before, you'd be like, oh, that's how you do it. OK. Well, what I'm about to show you is not the only way to do it, but I'm going to show you a way of doing something. All right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say file. Save all. All right, don't follow along with me. Don't do this because there's a few steps you have to do first that I've already done. I'm going to come in here and do a file, save all. I think I just did that and a file exit. All right, now in this payroll that you see right here. In there, I've got. Payroll console 01, payroll console 02 and payroll GUI 01. They're all in there. I could click on this and bring it up. I don't want to do that. All right, but I want to set this thing up so I can take this, put it in first to Git, then put it into GitHub, and then make it available for all of you to use. All right, so I'm going to show you a way of doing this. I'm not even going to lie to you and say this is the best way of doing it. I'm going to say this is the way for now I'm going to show you. So I'm going to come in here where I've got all this stuff. I am going to right mouse click and I am going to choose. Get bash here. All right, now I'm there. But I can't do anything with Git yet because I have not yet created. The file that's going to hold all my Git stuff. The way I do that and again, you are getting a piece of paper or, or a file that's got all these steps in it. You type in git init. Now I'm going to hit enter. After I do, you'll notice there's going to be another folder up here that's going to be called dot git. And it's going to look a little white or kind of washed out like this one because it starts with a dot. Right now, if I do this, if I say, hey, show me my git status. It says there ain't, there ain't none. You don't have any git here. So if I come in now and type in git, init and hit enter. Now there's that git directory. Now if I come in and again type in git status, it says this is all the stuff you have that you've changed, but you haven't added it yet. That's why it's in red. All right, so let me clear the screen. And now I'm going to tell it to add this stuff. So I say git add dot. That means add everything to be added and hit enter. OK, back with just my with just with this. Now notice if I do another git status. Now notice all that stuff is green. All right, and it did expand it to show everything that's been added. All right, that's all good. All right, but there's really about two or three other things that I have to do yet. All right, what I should have done earlier and didn't do, but I'm going to do it right now is I'm going to go out to GitHub and I'm going to make a folder called payroll projects. So let me copy that. Let me go back out to GitHub. So I'm going out to github.com. All right, yeah, it's still got that in there. I want to, uh, crud. Uh, boom, boom. Well, we're going to find out something right now. So github.com. And I don't want this. Uh, how do I get out of here? Oh, this is great. Um, fantastic. I have to log out of here so I can log back in as me. 
And I don't remember how to do that, which is good, but let's see. Resend or update your email address. Okay. Well, let's see if I can bring it in another window. No. <laughs> uh, boom, boom, boom. All right, let's do it like this then. See if I can do it. See if it'll take it this way. Um, Got this, please verify. Inspect, open a new tab. That still is exactly what it said before. Yeah, you're almost done. This is why I typically don't show students what I just showed you. All right, so let's see. Yeah, that's not what I wanted either. There's got to be a way to log out of this. Well, I think I can do it like this, if nothing else. Let's see if this works or not. Oh, it's not going to work either. I don't think this will work either. Well, I will get it. Let's put it that way. All right. But what I'm going to have to do is figure out how to do this, and I don't know what it is right now. It's probably very simple, which is why I don't know how. Yeah, that's not going to help me any. All right, what we're going to do, it's a little earlier than I wanted to, but let's take 10 minutes. I have to figure out how to get, get out of this. Then when we get back, we're going to copy over everything that we that I've got available for you that I showed you earlier, and we'll talk about what we're going to do tomorrow. And it is, let's come back at 1245, and we'll be done by no later than quarter after one. I'll see you then.
Like <clears throat> server, he's going to just. I've been my cellist, bro. All right, then it is 1245, so I'm going to start up. I have gotten into this, not the way I wanted to, but I had to go in through dark mode into, um, into GitHub. So everything is cool, and we'll get it all fixed. I sent you all this file during the break, okay? This stuff from really line 34 on down. It's just some URLs you can look at if you're interested. If you're not, don't. But this is the stuff that everybody is going to have to do. All right. So what I would like you to do if you are following along. OK, now I've already done a bunch of stuff to get these this this stuff in here, but I want to make sure. So first of all, I'm, I'm just going to follow the steps that are on here on the file. I just sent you should have done this before. But if you type in git minus minus version, it should come back with something like this. If you set up git this morning, it should say git version 2.40.1.windows.1. If you did it last semester, it very well could have another number in here, 2.34 or whatever. It doesn't matter. All right. Then what you have to do, and you have to do this only once, is you have to come in here and you have to type in git config minus minus global user dot name and then in double quotes put in your name don't put in jeff scott so your name john smith put in john smith right there all right that's letting the system know that when we hook this thing up to GitHub, this is the name we're going to be using. So it should be your name. All right. If it comes back with just a prompt, it worked. Then you want to put in almost the same thing, but 
what you want in there is not user.name, you want user.email. That should be, now my email address is different than yours. Mine is jpscott at rankin.edu, but yours would, again, if it was John Doe, like I show up here, it might be John, it might be John underscore Doe or whatever. It'd probably be more like this. I think that's the way they're doing it today, like that. But put that in. And again, then hit enter. And if it comes back again with your prompt, it all worked. To create the local Git folder, I already showed you this. It's Git init. To add things to that folder, it's Git space add space dot. Then to commit, which means I'm almost ready to take this and move it from Git to GitHub, you say Git commit minus M and put in a message. And I'm going to say, um, initial payroll programs, and I'm going to put today's date, 5-15-2023, and hit enter. Now, you might get a bunch of junk back like this. You might get a bunch of things that talk about line breaks. It really and truly does not matter. But I need this payroll projects. All right, so I'm going to copy that. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. Everything I've shown you so far, you'll have to do. But then when I get back into Git, GitHub, and now I'm into it here. All right, now I want to create a new repository that's going to hold this information. So I'm going to click New. I'm going to tell it you get you may have that you may not, but I want it to be a new repository that's called payroll projects. It says that it's available. That's good. I want it to be public. You will you, you choose private on yours and then send me an invite. We'll talk about that later. Mine's going to be public and I'm just going to click create repository. Then up here it's going to change this and it's going to show me that I now have this repository. All right, now I've got to go back to here. And I've got to set that repository. How do I know if it's been set? I type in git remote minus V. And it says JP Scott rank and etc. So it's all there. All right, so now let's see if I can send it there. Git push minus U origin master Git enter. It's going to spin for a little bit. Oh, that was very quick because there's only three things in there. Now, when I refresh this, there is, are the ones we just created today. So if you go out to here, right there, you'll be able to grab that information. All right, so I'm going to grab that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you. You can do exactly now what I'm showing you. All right, so. If you come out here and literally paste in that address and that address, let me show it to you, is right here. I don't think you even need this, but I'm gonna put all of it in. HTTPS colon slash slash github.com slash JP Scott Rankin slash payroll projects. So I'm gonna grab that whole thing right there and I'm gonna act as though I'm not me. I could be anybody and I'm gonna paste that in here. All right, and hit enter. Now it takes me to GitHub. All right, it takes me to GitHub. Okay, and JP Scott, if you've got, if it yours came up like this, don't worry about that message. It's because I screwed up before, but you click code and then click download zip. That will take everything we did today and it'll save it into your downloads folder as a zipped file. There it is. All right, now what I want to show you is we're gonna do almost the same thing as what we just did, almost the same thing, but I want you to now be able to come in and bring in all the stuff that I provided for you that we'll use for the whole semester. How do we do that? 
Well, first, let me find out what I called it. That's me if you wanted to know. That's more than you needed to see, but that's fine. So let's see, repositories. That's the one right there. So you do this. What do I mean? Well, to get to bring that one in, this is the address for that one. All right. So what do we do? We put this into our address bar. You only have to do this once. Put this into your address bar. I'll leave it up there for just a moment. So take that, copy it to the clipboard, put it into your address bar, hit enter, then just like we did before, so it's got all of your stuff in it you'll need for the semester. So now click code again and click download zip. This may take a bit of time because it's not a real small file, but eventually it will come up. It'll be zipped, so you will have to unzip it, but then you will have everything you need for the entire semester. What do you mean by that, Jeff? Glad you asked. All right, so what is in there, just so you know, are extra exercises, this is going to be your regular homework, so there it is. So that's how long it took to download it on my system. All right, so these are going to be our homeworks. All right, these are going to be our projects that we have to do. All right, and what else do we have in there? The slides I already told you, so those will be the points. The student download will be the stuff provided by um, Muroc. That's all their programs in the book and all their examples at the end of the chapter and the written tests. So you'll have all of that. All right. Now, I did mention because I said I'd do this. So this is, and we're going to bop through this very, very, very quickly. As like I said, I, it's not my goal here to spend a lot of time on PowerPoints. So we did go through this. You figured out now how to close, open and close up C-sharp an existing project or solution. We talked about the forum designer, the code editor, the solution explorer. We talked about how to adjust the windows that were on there, how to build and run a project. I mentioned that everything we're doing are desktop apps. They're going to run, run right from your desktop. All right, as opposed to web apps, which run on the browser, and that's what you do in your last semester here. Three platforms used to develop these. I don't even know exactly what they mean there. We'll see it in a minute. All right, I don't know if they mean like, I think it's uh, Windows. Nope, that isn't it, so forget it. The three languages, again, are Visual Basic .NET, F Sharp, and C Sharp. We talked about .NET a little bit. We will build this one probably tomorrow or one like it. The only one we care about out of these three is Windows Forms, WinForms. You will do ASP.NET Core MVC in your AWD 1115, the last class for the semester, or last class for the program, rather. We are using Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition. We are using C Sharp. We went through the IDE. Again, there's your toolbox. There is your menu. There is your toolbar. There is your form designer area. There is your solution explorer. There is your properties window. We went through what happens, talked a little bit about the difference between a compiler and a um, between compiling and interpreting. We looked at the start window. We looked again, I showed you different ways of opening this. We built a project similar to this one, really. We put code in. We looked at the Solution Explorer. I had you again move those around. 
We talked a little bit about this, and we'll get to this again when we talk target framework, just not today. And that's it. All right. So I'm going to get you out of here by 105, okay? But today, with what we did today, Close a bunch of these things because I don't need them anymore. Well, somehow it closed, but we'll, I'm going to bring up Red Shelf again. That's my PDF. Why are you doing this? I don't want ads. So today we went through all of chapter one. All right. Tomorrow we are going to look at chapters two and three. In chapter two, as they mentioned in here, we will learn how to design a Windows Forms app. All right. This will be very similar to what we did today, but we'll do it extremely slowly. All right, so we will create the new project as it says, and there's you know there's nothing new in here. All right, we'll talk about all this stuff again tomorrow. All right, and this is what they'll have us create, this invoice total form. So in this chapter, in chapter two, we create this. We don't write any code in here but we create this, all right? Then we get to chapter three. And when this ends, it's about page 55 or something like that. Then in chapter three, we add the code for it, all right? What I'll show you in there, what we'll probably do, just so we got a little something different, is we will go through and we will write this exactly as, as it is in the book. Then we'll go back and we'll rewrite it, but we will rewrite it as a console app. So again, you can see the difference between these. So that's what's on tap for tomorrow. On Wednesday, I am going to give you what I call a pretest. All right, which will be very similar to your first test. I will give you somewhere around an hour and a half, maybe two hours to work on it. Then I'll do it from scratch. When we get done with that, we will go over the chapters one, two, and three, the chapters one, two, and three written tests. So you know the kind of thing we're supposed to be doing. All right. And we will also, on your first set of exercises, we will do these two, 2-1 two, and 3-1, your first homeworks. We'll do them together, all right? So everything that you will have do this Sunday, we will do as a class. You must still turn it in. Anything we do as a class, you must still turn in, but we'll do it together, all right? And then Thursday, you will have your first hands on test. And again, it will be on chapters one, two and three. Basically, if you can understand the program in two and three, you should have very little problems. I believe there's like three or four problems you have to do on there. You have to write three or four programs. One of them is literally you write a console app that's about four lines long. That's a quarter of your test. All right, so I don't think this is going to be anything. You know, the average grade that I usually get on this first test is about a 98. All right, and that's usually because somebody forgets to do one or two things. All right, but I get a lot of hundreds on the first one. That's fine. All right, if everybody gets 100%, that's that's great. That's a great start then. All right, so the last thing that I wanted to mention is I have to go look, okay, I'm going to show you this, but I'm not going to show you who this may affect. All right. After class today, I'm going to go out to Inside Rankin. 
And when I go to the inside rank, and my view is different than yours. All right, but when I go out here and I go out for my class here. And that's this class, whoops, wrong class. There it is. All right. And I'm going to go over to faculty then. You don't have a faculty tab. I'm not going to click this because I don't want to embarrass anybody. I don't know if there's anybody there or not. But if I click here on view results, if it shows your name as not being authorized to be in this class, that means that either Rankin has not gotten payment from you or there is some kind of an issue. I don't know what. I haven't looked at this. I'm not going to do it now. If that happens, I will send you an email today. And then what you will have to do was on here. Is you will have to send an email to Patrick Glenn and figure out what the problem is if you don't know it. And he is at PM. Patrick, I don't know what his middle initial is, Glynn, G-L-Y-N-N, -N, at Rankin.edu. All right? Now, we went through a lot today. Whether it seems like we did or it doesn't, we went through a lot today. All right? We went over the URLs. I went over the syllabus. I showed you my YouTube channel. We installed Git. We installed GitHub, and again, if you need any more help, there's a couple YouTube videos for you. We installed the Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition. I just showed you how to bring that over from GitHub. All right, so you've got that as well. All right, we went over Chapter 1. We wrote two console programs and one GUI program. All right. Now you get you'll get an email like this from me every day that's got the link for, for our meeting and what we're going to do. At the end of every class period, you will after I get this done and put out on YouTube, you will also get another email from me. All right. On that email, it'll say. Today's presentation, like whatever this says, four hours and 56 minutes or whatever, it'll have the URL, it'll have what we did today, and it'll have what's due. If you have any questions on any of that stuff, it is your responsibility to email me and let me know. And again, I will answer it as quickly as I possibly can. That was a lot. I don't typically keep people this long on the first day of class, but I want us to get ahead. I don't want us to be behind. All right, so have a good rest of the day. I will see you tomorrow at eight o'clock sharp. Thanks.